Cowboys Thursday. This is one of the greatest quarterbacking careers as an overachiever we've ever seen, and he's just a great quarterback no matter where he was drafted. People are going to remember him as someone who didn't win enough, but where you consider where he came from and how good he actually was, he is one of the best quarterbacking stories we've seen in this league since Kurt Warner and very close to being Kurt Warner. And one of the tragic parts of this, though, is it took a while for the Cowboys to get the bright idea that if you ask Tony Romo to do everything, he will ultimately disappoint you. 2014 team was the first time they decided, hey, Tony, we're going to get some other guys around you. And he was great that year. He hasn't stayed healthy since then. But there's an argument that Tony Romo was the second best quarterback in the history of the Dallas Cowboys after Roger Staubach. If Troy Aikman had been asked to do as much as Romo had been asked to do, maybe we would have thought that he was fatally flawed also. If we put Romo on a team with Michael Irvin and Emmitt Smith, that guy's the one we're talking about as a surefire Hall of Famer. So you don't think that the Cowboys fans are going to remember him for fumbling that snap? <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. How much of his reputation would be different if he were just a better holder? Give me one play that you remember more than that one play in his Cowboys career. Did Russell Westbrook strengthen or weaken his MVP case by scoring 58 in a fourth straight loss? This might seem like a ridiculous thing to say, given how impressive Russell Westbrook is in general, being that athletic, everyone trying to stop him and still being more athletic than people in the most athletic league. But he's the reason they lost last night. Lost that game despite 58 points. He had a lot of wide open threes at the end, and he ended up missing them all. And I do tend to wonder whether or not at the end of games, this guy, even though he seems super human might get tired once in a while and miss some of those jumpers that he's not particularly good at from that range even when he's not tired yeah but to say he's the reason why they lost is to ignore the fact that he's the reason why they were in it of all the players in the last 30 years to put up 58 points Westbrook's the only one to put up nine assists he's not a great shooter but I'm not exactly sure who it is that he's supposed to pass the ball to to me this strengthens his case as the MVP because to put up 58 the last time somebody did that and lost was Michael Jordan in 1987 that's how long this is been. What he's doing is incredibly impressive. The fact that they're not winning is not because of Russell Westbrook. No other Thunder player shot double-digit times in that game. But, Monty, do you think it's fun to play with Russell Westbrook at this point, given that his usage rate is higher than anyone in the history of the league? He's always got the ball. He passes it sometimes. But do you think it's fun playing with him right now? Here's the only thing. Show me everybody on that team that can hit an open jump shot. You know who hasn't scored 58 points this season yet? Who? LeBron. Oh, there That's it is. That's right. You see how he did that? No matter where the shells get moved in the shell game, boom, hatred for LeBron. Guess what? Westbrook has more assists than LeBron, too. That, too. What finger was that? Does Brandon Marshall make the Giants a contender? All right, the Giants assigned Brandon Marshall to a two-year deal, meaning they've got Odell Beckham and Brandon Marshall, which means they have two receivers who are always open and two receivers who are a little bit difficult to ignore even in the times when you want to. I don't know necessarily if this makes them a contender, but with the defense that they showed last year and those two dudes, at the very least, it sounds like they'll contend in the NFC East. Well, what it does is it makes them better because here's how it makes them better. He's better than Victor Cruz and because of the salary cap permutations. He's cheaper than Victor Cruz. So you've upgraded there, but here's the thing. Eli Manning is clearly declining now. They offset some of that, covered it up by getting Odell Beckham in the first place, and now they're trying to cover it up some more. They keep taking the water that's in the boat and throwing it out this side, but it keeps coming in on the other side. Here's the other level of it, though. What we saw from the Giants before, there was nobody they had that could check Odell Beckham when he was acting bad. They might have brought somebody in who can do that. I'm doing a calculation. I'm trying to figure out how many times Brandon Marshall has made it to the playoffs. That is the crazy. Come up with the same number over and over again. It's zero. Big nada. It's the craziest stat. He's made every quarterback he's played with better. That's never been good enough for the playoffs. With Pierre Garçon signing in San Francisco, is Kirk Cousins next? It feels that way, right? Because they all want to be reunited with Kyle Shanahan to put up the monster numbers that they put up in Washington while not doing any actual meaningful winning. The Patriots, we've talked about this before, they don't overpay on anyone. They've got everyone on their roster at value. San Francisco's plan seems to be 
spend more, get more for guys who aren't as good and aren't that kind of value. Now, to be fair to them, they've got to get up to the salary floor, right? So Pierre Garçon is going to be fortunate to get some money because they have to give the money to somebody. But we talked to Albert Breer of MMQB.com on my radio show yesterday. He says that Kyle Shanahan sees Kirk Cousins as like a poor man's Drew Brees and maybe would prefer to have Kirk Cousins over Matt Ryan. If that's really how he feels, they are going to find a way to bring him in in San Francisco. The question is, you bring in Pierre Garçon, you bring in Kirk Cousins, you had a two-win team last year. What's that make you now, a four-win team? You know, nobody has seen the Washington GM. What is he going Oh, is he back there? You saw him? You feel him Is he there? there? That's a, He's by the swimming that's pool. A, that's right? where you call right there. If you that's got two right. first-round picks, call down there. Somebody will give, there him, give, they'll give you curses. <laughs> there might be two first-round picks just hanging out here, like actual dudes who will be first-round picks. Should Brandon Jennings be suspended for pointing a finger going at Jared Dudley? Man, we're doing some real wild Zapruder stuff here, but there was a bit of a tussle last night between the Knicks and whoever Jared Dudley plays for now, let me give you some video so I will know that. Plays for the Suns. The Suns. Brandon Jennings doesn't play for the Knicks. Oh, that's anymore. right. He plays there for the Wizards. Go. Let's go. <laughs> How did this happen? Okay. <laughs> Experts, baby. <laughs> so oh, here we go. Good pick. Oh, uh, Tyler Eulis, though. That's what I tell you about them little dudes. Yeah, yeah. What I tell you about them little dudes. Uh, There's Jared Dudley. Chest bumping. Now here comes Brandon Jennings. Now, Brandon Jennings said he was just telling him, you know you're not this kind of dude, you need to fall back, and he really wasn't pointing a gun at him. I have no idea if he was really pointing a gun at him. The question is, do you think that Brandon Jennings was going to point a gun at him? Because if you don't, this isn't a thing. Here's the thing, though, and I don't believe it's a thing either, but what's the one team in the league where you don't want to have anyone pointing a finger gun? It's the one where Gilbert Arenas actually brought a golden actual gun into the locker room. To be fair, though, it was a long time ago, and that's why they went back to the Red White and blue jersey, so you never again have to consider that Gilbert Arenas ever played for the Washington Wizards. It can't be a team that was known as the Bullets and then changed its name so it wouldn't be known as the Bullets and having the point guard looking like he's got a finger full of bullets. That's not the worst thing that Gilbert Arena did in the locker room. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, do you remember when he took a c in somebody's yeah. shoes? That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the boo boo and the shoe shoe yeah. is actually the bottom of Gilbert Arenas' career. Like, I understand why the other thing got headlines, but that was the sign that, he needed help. That actually happened. He said the bad sign for Joe Mixon's draft stock that only four teams met with him ahead of his pro day. Four teams met with him ahead of his pro day, but his agent said many, many teams called and inquired, about a dozen, and then his pro day was spectacular. And at that pro day, for everybody at Oklahoma, everyone saw that he's really good. And we knew he was really good. Merit rises in this draft, not morality. You will see him drafted by somebody. They just have to conceal their interest until the moment that all of this becomes public for our eyes. Yeah, I'm actually surprised four teams came in advance because they're the ones who then have to answer for it. The team that's going to take him is the one that's going to come in at the end and nobody knew it was coming. And they'll say, well, you know, we did our due diligence on the low. Remember this about this draft. Leonard Fournette went and put up that bad vertical jump and showed up a little bit heavy at the combine. Dalvin Cook put up a testing performance that does not seem to match his film and he seems to be a bit unexplosive. Joe Mixon really might be the best running back in this draft. Brace yourself for the reality. Somebody's going to take him because he is, in fact, worth the risk for someone. Is it a big deal that the German Giraffe is not one of only six players in NBA history with 30,000 points? All right, this is your friendly reminder that Dirk Nowitzki is in his 19th year in the NBA. That's part of scoring 30,000 points, getting old and still playing, which is pretty impressive. Here he is being guarded by Larry Nance Jr., who did not play against Dirk, much to my surprise when you think about it. I mean, you have to remember this. The Bucks wanted to have Tractor Trailer rather than to have Dirk Nowitzki. Like, he has legitimately changed the way that basketball is played, in part just by his very existence and a fascinating up and down in his career. How big a deal is it? Think of how crazy it would have been in 98 if anybody told you he would have scored 20,000 points, let alone 30. I'm glad that he's now got a historical record that shows us what kind of pioneer he actually is because of what Bomani mentioned. That size usually before him and Kevin Garnett didn't play that way. We we hadn't seen it. Now it's all over the league. But before this guy, it's not something that we saw very much. And then as an added bonus, 
Think of all the teams in the last 20 years that have won a championship with one star. You aren't going to find a whole lot. Dallas had one star and won the championship. That's the other thing, too. If LeBron had played worth half a damn in the 2011 finals, we'd still be calling Dirk a soft choker. Yeah, probably. Who do you think was happier about this? Dirk or Mark Cuban? Oh, man, probably Mark Cuban. Yeah, look at the video. Look, Mark points in the league. Look at this, Mark Cuban. I mean, he was really happy. He loves Dirk, yeah. man. I, mean, the, the, I don't think there's any franchise that loves his star player quite the way that they love Dirk. That's man. true. Coming up next on Highly Questionable. Oh, what's he jumping? What's that water made out oh, of? Oh, that's oil. Oh, <laughs> oh, dear God. My son's TV show is brought to you by Miller Lite, the original light beer. Time to play the game, turn the Cleveland their pool into a hot top. Do you question? That's that smell. You give us topics and events and we question them. Do you question if Heath Evans should make a comeback? I remember Heath Evans used to play fullback, now works for the NFL Network. Used to play fullback is why I know he should not make a comeback. <laughs> but let's watch a run to 40 and do some bench pressing. He's also 38 okay, years old, by the way. Room, who is right behind you. Uh, hey man, that's a, uh, that's a deceptive speed, yeah. shall we say? That's good speed for a fullback. I don't understand why he lifts weights in a dress shirt but runs without a shirt at all. Whoa, 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 hold on. How many reps is he gonna get to? Is that 225 or is that 185? That's two, that's two plates. Two plates per side. That's 180 plus 44. Stop hating. He did 45 reps of 225? 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. 41. That's not done. I don't know if he should make a comeback, but he is officially that guy at the gym. What guy? That guy. That's a testament how difficult that league is. That strength wasn't any good in that league. Hey, Heath, that was very, very impressive. But if you really want to make a comeback, you got to give me a call, buddy. I got some urine for you. Oh, wow, that's, <laughs> that's an right. accusation. That's a hell of a proposition, Whoa. I'm telling you. I mean, there was a lot more reps than any of the fullbacks at the combine did. But, Whoa. you know, he's got old man strength. Like, that, he doesn't need your urine. He's powered by old man strength. That is reckless what my father just did. But you don't know if it's not true. You don't know. Do you question if this kid should get bin next time? Oh, this is good. Bomani, you are going to like this. I've seen this. Watch this. This is tremendous in the bat flip arena. High school baseball in Texas. Bang. And the bat goes further than the ball does. Yeah. I would like less concerned with whether he should get beaned or whether he beaned somebody with that or broke somebody's windshield. How far did that did that bat leave the playing field, go over a fence? Wow. I tell you this, uh, you might consider beaning him the next go round, but if we could put number 34 back on the screen <laughs> He's big. Uh, in the same shot with that pitcher, <laughs> yeah. if we could see the, oh, yeah, I don't really feel yeah. like the pitcher wants those problems. <laughs> I don't feel like anybody nah, does. Nah, as my brother says, his weight class is for a reason. Do you see the cashier? He was a big snitch. Do you see what he was telling the app? Look at him, look at him through. He flipped his back. Oh, let's see that. That's right. That is big snitch, is buddy. He, is he look at him. Let's watch this catcher here. Is the catcher going to tattle? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. The catcher is a lane. Good call, Poppy. Good call. The catcher is a lane. He's like, you just going to let him do that? You need to be asking that of the pitcher, buddy. Or maybe yourself. You're the one that called it. I gotta say something to that catcher. Come closer. Mm -hmm. Snitches get stitches. Mm -hmm. That's right. All right, that's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. what? Hey, did he stab you, yeah. or is he he's waving yeah. around a fork? Is that the rhythmic gymnastics? <laughs> 
you question if this mascot is too into the game? This is the second clip of the show from Wizard Sons. Never saw that coming. Let's see what happened. The Wizards won this game, by the way. What? what the hell was that? Is that the gorilla? What was the gorilla doing? What was he doing? I don't even understand. Well, well, first of all, I didn't know the gorilla was still in the league. Whoa, gorilla. Oh, there's a drumstick on the floor and he ran out of there. Do you realize that I initially thought that the gorilla was being chased by a bigger, a bigger gorilla? That's what I originally thought. Nope, the gorilla was just trying not to get sued. I mean, I have gone to the floor for a couple of drumsticks, you know. I oh, mean, my father will that, do that. Right. That's I mean, true. That's I, true. I, I see, Thanksgiving, yeah, my father's all of a sudden like, uh, you know, wrestle rolling like on his elbows, yeah, grabbing things off the floor, yeah, fighting right. the dogs for it. You're right there with him, aren't you? I am. That's yeah, right. I am. I'm right next to him. That's how I see it. Do you question if this guy needs better friends? All right, we are headed out to Russia. Let's see, what's this, guy jumping from a building while on fire? What, uh, what's happening here? Oh, what's he jumping? What's that water made out oh, of? Oh, that's oil. Oh, oh. dear God. <laughs> Wait, how are we gonna blame this on his friend? Oh, no. Oh, get, that seems unsafe, it seems unwise, it seems... Like, was he the one guy who didn't know what it was? Uh, get it. Uh, and also, why is there just oil? <laughs> can, we, can we get to that part? That is remarkably stupid. Do you know how hard that's going to be to get off of your body? I mean, where do you do that? Because you can't, like, I mean, you can't go to your woman's house with that. Okay, we're, oh. okay, it's a start. The stupidity of this. Do they really think the power cleaner is going to get that off? That's what they think. You know, he got lucky. The guy with the hose, he had a cigarette in his mouth. He had a cigarette in his sleeve. Then you got a bowl of fire there. That's I, I still have an inadequate explanation as to how any of this happened. Does that guy's shirt say, on my way to steal your girl? Oh Hold on, somebody here rewind. Forget about this right here. We need to get back to Mr. Steal Your Girl. Oh, my God. I, right there. On my way. <laughs> to something that starts with an ST, yeah. your girl. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> These guys, look at this. Look at this quartet of stupidity right I here. Just Let's examine he, all of this. I right just want to know who the old man <laughs> is upset with. Christ almighty, these are the four dumbest people per square foot oh, anywhere no, no. on this Hold planet. Hold on, no, there might be the four dumbest, but one of them is definitely ahead of the other. <laughs> like, like, if that were a big three, <laughs> old man's LeBron James. <laughs> Hundreds on the table, twenties on the floor. Fresh out of work on the way with some more. And, <laughs> and I, I love, love it. it. <laughs> Highly questionable this broadcast from the Clevelander Hotel on beautiful South Beach, Miami. Time to play the game that is going to be a grandfather. Really? I'm pregnant? Wow. See? Okay. Oh no. You tell us what to watch on television tonight. We tell you if we're intrigued or not. At least he didn't tell something else. On ESPN2, the ACC tournament, Pitt and UVA. Pitt advanced last night after beating Georgia Tech in a close game. Let's check in with an injury here. Their coach kept Light stalling. Light comes to a halt. That, that's, oh yeah, he's the ball hitter. Yeah. Uh, not terribly concerned about the injured player face first on the floor. It's very important that we beat Georgia Tech. Let me go yell at somebody else. Take this court time here, this camera time, to show that I'm in charge and I'm coaching. Bomani, are you intrigued? Oh, yeah. What excites me more about this game that we talked about? Kevin Stallings and his shenanigans or UVA offensive basketball? Oh, no. Oh, no. Poppy, are you intrigued? Are you kidding me? See, see, I'm very intrigued. You know, that coach from Pitts, you know, I mean, that guy doesn't show any respect, any, any feeling for his player. He's there right now. There, that play, huh? Well, you made Pittsburgh. You shortened it and you made it <laughs> Pittsburgh. No, Pits. you made it. I thought yeah. he called them Pips. Yeah, I, I was know, trying to imagine, know. you know, Kevin Stallings. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. The, the Pits. The Pits. We are the Pits. Yeah, we are yeah. the Pits. <laughs> and it looks like we're trying to shovel a, a ditch. <laughs> On Viceland. Vice World of Sports, Calcio Storico. 
What does that mean? I didn't even hear him well, and let's see what Sound we've like got Sound like you make here. a bone strong. What happened? Calcio? Who's Florence that? is famed for its history, but there's one tradition here that remains a mystery to the rest of the world. Here, there's an ancient sport that continues today. Anche questi gladiatori che giocano per 50 minuti sulla sabbia fanno parte del contesto della bellezza di Firenze. Oh yeah, I mean it's football, it's soccer, and it's UFC, of course. Yeah, I'm interested in that. Bomani, are you intrigued? Are those fools out there doing that for free? <laughs> I mean, because that looks like they're doing that for free. Yeah, uh, Papi, are you intrigued? <laughs> see, see, I'm very intrigued. Listen, I'm telling you, finally I found a sport that I can follow, you know, fighting all the way through it. 50 minutes of fighting on the sand. You know, the referees, they don't interrupt anything. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of punches being thrown. Mm -hmm. You can bring a chair if you want to. You can hit somebody with a chair, you know. I'm telling you, I mean, now, hockey is nothing compared with this sport. You know, I'm telling you, they got a new fan now. What's the name of the sport? <laughs> it's an Italian sport. Oh, yes. oh, that's, okay. right. that's right. They play in Italy. That's right. the only place where they play. Violento right. is the name of the sport. And Violento. Not, yeah, you're not allowed to hit anybody with a 70-year-old pop singer. You know, you'll do very well in that type of a sport. You know, nobody will want to touch you. You know, you'll be so sweaty. You know, really? everybody will okay. stay away from I you. Mean, that's okay. right. Yeah. I don't sit all the way on this side by accident. Yeah, okay. Really? That's all the time we have for today. Thank you for watching. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Gracias. See you mañana. <laughs> it's a bust. Hey, everybody. How are you? Yeah, there oh, you are. A bust. That's oh, right. I it's thought a he bust. Had... Yeah, look at them. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's right. I thought he said it was a bust. It was time to get up out of here.